Hey everybody, welcome back to Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Completes, where last time we went through the final optional dungeon, Lionhead, and now we're actually going to do some of the required dungeons. There are required dungeons in the epilogue, we just haven't got to any of them yet. It's been a long time coming, but let's head back to the beginning of the game, shall we? Beginning of the game being the Dragon Ruins. We actually weren't able to explore that place because it was the glorified cutscene and heroes running away from everything. But now we actually get to explore the place. In the epilogue, it is open to you. You could have came here straight away if you wanted to. But I did everything first because I wanted to get everything done before even coming here. Which means this place is going to be a little bit easier because the required dungeons, they don't really expect you to do any of the optional stuff. They just wanted you to do these and beat the game again. But yeah, the Dragon Ruins. I guess where the challenge may be here is if you decided to head here with Hero alone if you wanted to. You can do that. You don't need your other party members like at all on the epilogue. Speaking of party members, though, this place isn't challenging in the slightest. You don't necessarily need to have, like, any status change stuff if you don't want them on. You can have whatever your best equipment is, honestly. You're going to be getting some more goodies here anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you also remember the path that Hero took in order to leave this place, just do it in reverse, and you actually can get through this dungeon rather easily if you decide to remember all that. Either way, I'm just going to kind of go along the path and just get you there anyway. But on our way there, we have some new enemies to deal with. We have the Cannon Foot as well as the Shell Shredder. Which sounds like something from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Again. 90s, right? <laughs> Alright, so. The Cannon Foot. If it's just kind of like standing around, it's just going to hit somebody. If it's like a little mandible thing, he's even like, eh, and just hit them. But if it's doing this little thing where it's like charging its laser, it's going to just do a line attack and hit whoever's in the line. It does kind of hurt, but it's not that big of a deal. They're resistant to Charm, Death, Paralysis, Poison, Seal, Sleep, so don't even bother doing any of that. The Shell Shredders, on the other hand, if they're kind of just uh, floating there like this, if they're just not moving really, they're just gonna... They're just gonna just attack somebody. That's it. But if they're spinning around like this, you know the deal by now. They're gonna go all over the screen and hit everybody. They're weak to pretty much Earth, Fire, Thunder, Water, and Wind, so use magic on them if you want to get rid of them really quickly. Just have Lamina just do Catastrophe or something. And they're resistant to Charm, Death, Poison, Paralysis, Seal, Sleep. You know, the whole works by now. Everything's pretty much resistant to it, so don't even bother. Either way, honestly, this place you can get by just by attacking everything outright. You don't even need to bother going too fancy on it. Everybody can get rid of them pretty easily just by attacking. And honestly, Lamina is probably just going to use Catastrophe and get rid of everything really quickly anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but still. Mega damage. Exactly. Bye-bye, everything on the screen. To get through this first section, honestly, all you really need to do is just head to the upper right. You just need to be careful exactly how you go about it. But we have the third of the four new enemies in this area, which ironically there's four in this battle. The Shark Sphere. The Shark Sphere, you know, resistant to charm, death, poison, paralysis, seal, sleep, all the goodies as usual. But they're kind of just sitting around like this and they look like they're about to fall asleep on you. They're going to hit the entire party. It's going to hurt. But if they're doing this, they're just going to hit one person. you think it'd be the other way around, honestly? But either way, they don't have a lot of help, so you can literally just attack them. It's not that big of a deal. You don't need to, you don't need to be fancy about it. If you have, like, Althena's sword and you have Hero being able to attack six times in a row, this battle is really, really easy. <laughs> it's just kind of like, up, oh, let's do some damage. It's not going to do that much because it's just a standard attack, but just have Jean go in there. Let's get rid of that one. That crit also helped a lot. There we go. That's another one down. And there we go. And then Hero's going to go and go, go whap. And then whap. And then whap. And it's dead. I didn't even need that crit because I had like three more attacks coming. It's fine. That was an easy battle. Either way, just watch out when you're heading to the right up over here. Because you need to go in the direction of the monster. That's a dead end over there. It's getting to the point where I can just click AI and let the game just handle the battles at this point. I mean, it does waste magic doing that, but it gets through the battle for me and I don't have to click anything, so. Pretty much done for that. Hello, enemy that I'm going to fight really shortly. At least with the AI mode, the game's always been smart enough to be like, oh, three enemies in a line? Pyro Pillar, kill them all, please. <laughs> so that's always nice. We have the last new enemy right over here. The Goliath. 
if the Goliath is kind of just standing around like this, if it's not really going to be doing anything, and, like, its horns are glowing, you can kind of tell they're glowing a little bit. They are going to, like, just shoot lightning at somebody, and anyone that's around them, they'll get hit by it. But if its arms are kind of, like, in a I'm going to punch you motion where they're just upright, they're just going to go up and just hit somebody and just keep doing that. Otherwise, they're not that bad. Ironically enough, they're resistant to death. Earth, fire, thunder, water, winds. Yes, you can actually use status effects on them. At this point, why would you, though? Because, honestly, yeah, while they're resistant to all that stuff, you literally could just probably just get by if a catastrophe, just nuke everything on the screen, then everybody else is going to go up and attack the thing and get rid of it anyway. It does have a lot of HP, though. That's like 700 compared to like everything else here, which, honestly, everything else here kind of has low hit points. You get rid of them really dang quickly. But now Jesus is going to go up and just pummel in and just get rid of it really dang quickly. The defenses are kind of high on it, but not that big of a deal. Especially since here is going to go right after and just kind of pick up the slack anyway. There you go. And Hero also gains a level after that. So that's nice. And Lamina gains a level. I forgot that, like, my levels are still wonky. <laughs> so Ronvar and G not having a level up yet is weird. But if you want to get to the next room really quickly, just go all the way to the left over there, fight a couple monsters, then go straight up. If you want to see, like, a little weird extra goodie, you can go this way. Ronfar gains a level after that one, as well as Gene, so that matches up a little quickly. But now we gotta wait, like, 20 battles or whatever for Leo to catch up. Because, you know, uh, Leo has just kind of just been behind. Eh, that's not awful. That's maybe, like, oh, wait, that's a six, not a nine. Yeah, that's gonna take a while. Sorry, Leo. Either way, we can just head straight down over here, and we could actually, quote-unquote, leave the dungeon? There's no point to doing this, though. I mean, I guess if you want to quick out for some reason, you can. This is like a little safety spot. You can make a save if you want, but I don't see the point. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could use the pendant from there, but why? <laughs> why would you bother? Just use the white dragon wings and then just use the pendant. It's not that big of a deal. It's like one extra menu button. Yeah, we're just going to get out of here by going straight up over here. To the next floor, which still doesn't have any goodies on it. For a actual, like, required dungeon, it takes a while to get to the treasures. All right, and just continue over this way. Yeah, we're getting to that staircase over there, so we need to take the long way around. If you remember the path that Hero took, again, you should be able to figure it out from here. Don't bother going to the left over here. It's completely pointless. It just kind of leads to that area over there. It's just a long, winding way that you don't really need to bother taking. You need to head down this way. Hello. Should be, like, another enemy in this area. I don't think I can dodge them. Uh, I made the attempt. I mean, I could fight and get Leo that level up, but there's still more enemies in this area anyway, so I'm not even really too bothered to do that. Either way, right over here. And now, the big room. We can actually start finding some treasures. Remember that, like, spot that hero was jumping along when the, like, ground broke and stuff? Yeah, the ground's fixed. I don't see how, but it is. Honestly, it would have been nice if it was still broken that you basically had to go around to get to this chest, because that's just pretty much a loop-de-loop -loop right over there. Not that big of a deal. Speaking of this chest, the Justice Rod. That is for Ronfar. And I'm not equipping it. Yes, it's really good. It's pretty much his best weapon in the entire game. Because it's more ultimate than the more ultimate ultimate. You know, it's like, it's pretty much like the epilogue ultimate. It's the better than the best. I'm not putting it on because I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to keep on the rest of the daggers. So I can keep up my magic combos. It's fine. Either way, get rid of you. And we have a little bit of a long winding path. If you want to continue forward, just go straight up. But you're going to be missing out on Hero's best armor in the game. So... We're definitely going to want to get that. The thing is, we just got to take the really long way around to get to it. Kind of unfortunate. But we're pretty much almost there already. So it's not that big of a deal. We'll just go over here. I wonder if I could dodge him. You going to go back in there? No. You're supposed to go back in your little cubby hole. You're not going to go back there, are you? Nope. <laughs> I tried. All right. After all those battles, I actually probably should finally heal. <laughs> there you go. I've been kind of getting through, not even bothering healing until just now, so it should show you that if you don't know all the optional dungeons, this place is kind of pretty easy. Grab that for Hero's best armor in the game, the dragon armor. There we go. 
Yeah, 284 defense is pretty dang high. You think Dine's armor would be the best thing in the game because it's like a callback to the first one, but uh, it's not. All right, now we just make the long trek back up to the staircase, which honestly isn't that far. I could potentially just use the pajama combo so I could just kind of run constantly. But this dungeon, it does have a lot of floors. It's honestly not that big. I'm pretty much like more than halfway through it, give or take. It's not that big of a deal. All right, next floor, which over here, we do have another little bit of a treasure. Let's fight you. Leo gains a level, level 61. It's about time. Is after all that effort of trying to get you level up? This is something for Jean. <laughs> yep, there we go. The Scarlet Wrap. The best equipment for Jean in the game. Might as well put that on really quick and then make our way to the next floor, which is on the other side. This is kind of just like a little of a matching setup. Hello there, Cannonfoot. Let's get rid of you. I mean, honestly, with how long it took to level up Leo, I'd be surprised if, like... Eh? Never mind, that's gonna take a lot longer than I was going to. I was gonna be like, are they close to leveling up now? But no, they're not. They're not at all. Alright, we'll just go straight down. We got another enemy right over here to fight. About time the game decided to use Catastrophe when I hit AI. There we go, the Lion Helm. I wonder who this could be for. <laughs> Leo! There we go. It just kind of works out with the name, but yeah, that defense. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Now, right over here, we have another little bit of a treasure next to another Goliath enemy. Glad the AI did Tranquil Lindy on that one. I don't have to go to the menu at all. I mean, I kind of do because I just got an Archer Crest. The Archer Crest is a kind of unique crest. I'm going to show it off on Hero because Hero's actually going to be able to do something with it. Attack range increases. Does not work with staffs. Yeah, it brings my uh, attack down pretty far if I take that off, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know what? Jean. I think Jean will probably be a better bet for this. So let's put that on. Yeah, she loses a decent chunk of stuff because that's obviously because I'm taking off something. But yeah, let's see how this works. Allows long range attacks, does not work with staves. Let's get into a battle and we'll check it out. Because I know Jean's going to attack at least. So if I put on Leo, he's never going to get a chance to even do anything. All right, so let's give this a shot. I'm just gonna have Hero just attack these things. Ronfar just attack these things. Genie attack these things, and you just, you know what? Do some damage on these things. And then Leo go over here. <laughs> I'll take care of this. All right, let's check out how this works. Yep, you get like a little bit of an extra little wave attack. So if, if anything is in the area surrounding it, it will hit them too. Which is kind of cool because it's like a little bit of a line attack. So if you're attacking with, say, Hero, and he swings his sword, he could hit something behind him. It's kind of cool, but I kill everything really quickly anyway. So I would rather just have the extra attack on Gene. So it's nice, but yeah, you, you definitely know how I just want to have like the better stats versus maybe a slight range buff. There we go, the Goddess Gauntlet. That's for Lamina, I believe, right? Yeah, it's it's Lamina, okay. Not you. Uh, you. 228? Okay, why not? There we go, something for Lamina, finally. And now the rest of the dungeon is still rather uncharted territory, but now we're dealing with, like, oh, hey, see that room right over there to the right? That's just a dead-end room that if you were to go upstairs and then come in through a different way, it's a complete dead-end. There's gonna be some rooms like that here, and it gets slightly confusing. But it's not going to be that much of a bother because I'm going to take the right path anyway. I'm just going to skip all the dead end versions of the rooms. I'm just going to go to the direct right way because honestly, it's not that hard to navigate. All right, I'll just get rid of this next one. And there we go. All we need to do is just keep heading north from here. And we have another staircase right there. That isn't a dead end. So now we can just keep going. Go right over here to another enemy. It's blocking another chest. All right. Grab this, the silver light. We're definitely going to need that because we're coming up on the boss. Took a little bit to hit get here. All right, going down this way leads to a staircase that leads to a complete square room dead end. So we're not going to bother with that one. All right, and right up over here leads to another staircase. Well, yeah, we have an enemy that be dealing with, and as you can tell, we kind kind of just move around all willy nilly. So let's make sure to top off before we actually approach the thing because that'd be kind of bad if we didn't do that. 
And let's... Did I really just heal one HP? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I have more than enough starlights for this. I could just go like bloop, just top off you, top off you, top off you as much as possible because these things are like really cheap now because end game and tons of money, you know. There you go. Everyone's topped off, ready to go. And for equipment, honestly, you definitely want Hero to be able to just be doing his attacks as much as possible. But more than likely, I'm using Triple Sword anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But for Ronfar or Jean, you would definitely need White Dragon Protect on. You definitely want somebody having this. We definitely want it. Yes. <laughs> Other than that, more attack and just the better speed. Yeah, that, that'll work there just fine. And honestly, yeah, just in case, we'll keep that on. We're pretty much all set for this combo. It's it's pretty good to go. Just make sure your defenses are high, as high as can possibly be for this. Because this thing's kind of a big physical attacker. Speaking of physical attacking, let's actually get into the battle, shall we? The Phantom Sentry. The Phantom Sentry I mentioned way, way back in episode 11 of this LP, where it was a boss that they cut from the PlayStation version at the Bandit Butte. Where normally you would fight that thing in the Sunken Ruins, which is the next dungeon we're going to be heading to, they moved it here, and it has nothing to do with what we fought originally way back when on the Psyche City version, if you were to play that version. Here is just a stone golem dude. Honestly, I like this change. I think the whole idea of it before was kind of dumb. But here, originally, you actually fought some doppelgangers of yourself, which is kind of neat, and it would be nice to see that happen, but oh well. Okay, so going on to the Phantom Sentry, when his animation is kind of going like this, he's just breathing there, he's going to suck up our characters closer to him, and he's going to buff himself up. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to have Hero do Triple Sword. I'll do White Dragon Protect, because next turn he is going to hit us really hard if we're all in the corner over there next to him. And that would suck. Otherwise, mm, with Jean, I'm thinking I'm going to do Slam Dance. I can get her, like, a Doppelganger of my own, so I can just do some extra damage there. Lamina's gonna power up everybody, and Leo's just gonna do Soul Blade. This thing has 20,000 HP, so it's not that big of a deal. It can get rid of it, like, basically, you can see all, all his attacks before you actually kill it, so it's fine. Yeah, there we go. His attack is buffed up, and that pretty much means the next turn. The next turn when basically... Gene, can you hurry this up? Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now that Sword Arm is just sitting there out, it's going to basically just hit everybody with its buff currently and the fact that everybody's right there. If I did not have White Dragon Protect, I'd probably be dead. Yeah, it would kill me flat out. That That's bad. So what you will want to do normally is if you don't have White Dragon Protect, you could use Defend and move your characters so they won't get hit by the attack, which is kind of nice. I could actually do that this turn if I want to get everybody out of the general like area so they don't actually get hit by this. Just like a little bit of that action and then a little bit of this action. Just get everybody out of the way as much as possible. And then same with Leo. Just kind of move you over here. So that is what you would do if you want to avoid the attack. Yeah, that would hurt. And that still gives me White Dragon Protect for later. Thank you, Gene, for some extra attack. There we go. And now, now that it's kind of gone all like um, Arbiter from Halo 2 with the energy sword going on. Some people will get that joke. It's just basically going to just shoot a shockwave across the screen that's going to hit everybody. It's not as strong as the attack before that. But it still will hurt, which is why we have White Dragon Protect active. So what we're going to do from here is just triple sword. We're going to actually bring his attack down. Because it'd be nice to have him not do that much damage. Actually, you know what? Since I'm blocking it anyway, I'm just going to lower his defenses from here. That way I can do a little bit more damage. In the meantime, you're going to do a blue dragon palm. And Lamina, you're just going to... 
How about it? Power everybody up again, and then Leo is just going to do soul play. I'll take care of this. Blue Dragon Ball. Taste my refreshment. Yeah, that could have potentially hurt, but it's not that bad. Let's get an extra little bit of attack off. Thank you. All right, now for this one, since he's doing like the little diddle hand motion with his arm, he's actually going to take his arm and sink it into his like wrist. Kind of like a Mega Buster from Mega Man. And he's just going to shoot everybody on screen. It's going to kind of hurt. Not wholly. It's one of his weakest attacks. So I'm just going to use Shattered Sword anyway to bring down his attacks. And I think I'm actually going to do... Yeah, I'm going to do Catastrophe on this one. That way I can do a little bit more damage just outright while everyone else is just doing their damages too. Mega damage. It better be. Okay, it's doing the attack again. I'm okay with this. Honestly, it kind of threw me for a loop a little bit, not just going through its standard rotation, but whatever, I'm totally okay with that. I would just lower his defenses a little bit, just keep doing some more damage, I guess. Not really that big of a deal at this point. To be fair, honestly, with most of the bosses at this point, if you've done all the optional dungeons already, these next two bosses, you could probably get by just doing Triple Sword and White Dragon Protect. Honestly, that's all you really need. Hero gains level, level 62. Ronfar gains level, level 62. Jean gains level, level 62. Lamina gains level, level 62. And... Sorry, Leo. It happens. Are you at least close to leveling, though? That's all I'm really caring for. I, Yeah, there we go. Uh, You need about one more boss battle for that. <laughs> oh, well. And here we go. Let's go straight down over here. Would you look at that, hero? The Rememberizer is glowing. Yes, the Rememberizer. It's about time, honestly. We can see that we got Ruin Raiders, the last cutscene in this list that I needed to get, which is honestly hilarious considering it's like the second cutscene in the game. Oh yes, that is all the cutscenes. I could have technically gotten this one earlier, but oh well. Either way, let's grab this jewel. Right, Oppo Jewel, it sparkles like a star. You remember the first time we found this room, Ruby? We were so green! Uh, Ruby, are you okay? Are you okay there? I think my ribs are so sore from that fall. You flew down. Well, luckily we didn't get killed back then. We were such kids. But we survived and now we're great adventurers. Now we have the left dragon eye. We need to find the right dragon eye. Where should we start looking, Hero? Any ideas? Yeah, they, um... They used the wrong little thing there. They had Ruby's sprite for that. And... Oops. Yeah, we can just get out of here. No problem. Now we're pretty much done here. And with that, the Dragon Ruins is complete. We're done there. We got some extra goodies here and there. We're pretty much good to go for the next place. So next time I have to play is more Lunar 2 Eternal Blue complete. We're going to head towards the Water Ruins. The next dungeon in our lineup that's required. And we've already been there when we were gathering everything before the Rememberizer. So we're pretty much good to go. See you all then.